Hello and welcome back. This is the second tutorial in the Remember the Milk series and we're going to look at creating tasks and the different options that are available to us when doing so. So the first thing I'm going to do after I've logged in is go to the Tasks view. You'll see that the two lists I created are now available to me here. Also there's the Inbox Sent and All Tasks tabs which are standard with the program. I am going to click first, well I'll click on all tasks, and to create a task you simply use this box here, and I will say create my first task. When I hit enter the task is created. If I look under personal it's not there, if I look under work it's not there. It's only under all tasks because I failed to classify it as one or the other. So it's probably a good idea to work out a classification system and to make sure that every task falls into that classification system, even if it's miscellaneous. So let's try again. Now I'm going to click on the personal tab and I'm going to say go food shopping. Notice that that appears under the personal list, not under the work list but they both appear under the under the all tasks list because that's a combination of all my folders. If I had four or five different lists they would all appear under all tasks. Now since my first task doesn't appear in any of my lists I could click the checkbox next to it and I could click a number of checkboxes if I had more tasks and I could go to more, op more options. Under more options I could move that now into a particular list. So I will move that into my work list. Gives me a confirmation here and the option to undo that if I've made a mistake. But now under my personal list is go shopping and under my work list is create my first task. So let's try this. Lesson plans. Um, call parents. Grade tests. Okay, these may not be tasks that you need to put in a list, but just for sample, they're all in here. Notice that they do alphabetize as you create them. And let's look at some other things we could do under more, more actions. So if I had grade tests, I could also check that and duplicate it. And again, I can do that with more than one item at a time if I check the boxes. Okay, now I really don't need two grade tests, but I duplicated it so that I could save some time. So if I, if I select it, on the right it's going to show me the options that I could associate with that particular task, and we'll look at those shortly. But up at the top it has the title and a pencil, so here's where I could change this. And as soon as I click out, it will be updated over on this side of the screen. Now that process really didn't save me any time, it wasn't worth it, but had I included a lot of other settings in here that were going to be the same, it would have, it would have been a time saver. Now that we have a few extra tasks in here, I'd like to look at some other settings under more actions. So I am going to say that this and this are my highest priority right now. So I can actually set them to priority one. They will become color coded. Lesson plans as priority two. And you can see that they moved up in the list now. And I can leave things unprioritized. I can leave them at the bottom of the list. Or, oh, let me select the last two. I could set those as priority three. Now, if something becomes less important, if the lesson plans are suddenly less important, they were creating my first task becomes less important, I can select that and I can also use these move up or down priorities. So I'm going to say move down, you notice it now becomes blue in the second category. I can move it down again into the light blue category. If I moved it down yet again, it would simply become unprioritized. 
Next, let's look at how to set some of the details of a task. So I'll take this one at the bottom, and when I select it, when I click on it, over on the right, my options become available. Now there are two tabs, there's task and notes. So notes is very simple. I can simply go in there and say, um, probably not something I would need to write myself a note about, but I can leave notes that are associated with the task here and those will be available for me to review at a later time. Now here is a list of the types of things that can be associated with a task. So we'll go through them quickly. They're pretty intuitive. The first is a date. So a due date. So I'm going to type in a date. I'm going to need to get it in a proper date format. And you can see that's now entered. Do I want to repeat this task? And I don't have options I can select, like in a Google Keep or a Google Calendar, etc. But what I can do here is I can type in just natural language every two days. And I'll know if I've chosen the correct language because I'll get the confirmation up here. If I've picked something it doesn't really understand, I'm going to find that out as well. It allows you to enter a time estimate. Again, if it doesn't understand what you're writing, it'll let you know up here. And you can associate tags with, with these tasks, and that makes them more searchable and, more, and easier to organize. So you actually create the tags on the fly, right as you're doing a task. And so let's put this here and say, I'm going to call this one junk because this is just a silly example. Locations can only be used if you've created a location previously, so we'll look at that a little later. If you have a URL or a web link you want to pass along, you can do that here. So in my case, I actually have one. I, I created this Google Doc, and this is my lesson plan template, so if I was doing lesson plans, I could put that link in here and whenever I came to these link and I could repeat that every seven days so that would come up for me all the time and if I were, I were to click on that it would open up my Google Docs for me right away. Now keep in mind keep in mind that in order for this to work in order for this to open up the permissions would have to be set up correctly in Google if you were not logged in at that point it would just take you to a login screen, you would log in before it would open. In addition, it will track how many times a task may have been postponed, and if you're sharing it with anyone, we'll talk about that in a moment. But if I look under tags and I click on the tag, that would be one way to search for all of the tasks with that particular tag. Okay, other ways to search would be to select things that are due today, due tomorrow, overdue. So let me add some more dates in there to some of these tasks and see how that works. Let me first mark those that are overdue, so one gets a checkbox, and I will change that to a priority one. So my lesson plans that would do on the 15th is my first priority. I am now going to select things that are due today, so just these two. And I will make those my second priority. You can see grade test is already third priority, but if it wasn't, I could select that one and make it my third priority. If something is selected, we looked before about how to move it down the scale, but we could also just set no priority, and that would take that away altogether. But let's make that a priority three. Alternate ways of searching would include using the sort by feature. So now I'm sorting by priority, but I could also sort by due date automatically or task name. Now, once I've completed a task, perhaps I've completed these three, I simply mark them complete and they disappear from the list. 
Grading tests I would like to postpone for right now. And I can reschedule it later. Now to revisit several of the functions we talked about earlier but didn't discuss or discuss in detail, one would be location. And in order to add a location, you need to go to the location tab here. You're going to wind up going into maybe searching for address. There's one. And then adding a location. So once you get zoomed into where you want to be, you have to click add location. And get that location exactly where you want it and give it a name. Just sample location safe. Once the location has been added to the map, you could go to your tasks. Go to location. And as you start to type it, it will appear in the list. That'll create a link for you to that location. The other thing, you notice that we did create this junk tag earlier. We created it right in the task on the fly. So if we go back to settings and now we look at tags, you can see that it's in here. And, and that's how you create them. Now, that being the case, when I go to my other tasks, it works the same way as locations. As I start to type it, if it's in the list, it allows me to choose it. The last feature we can look at briefly is the shared feature. This is shared with no one. And in order to use that, I have to create contacts. So I'll come in here to contacts. I have none. And it would have to be somebody who is a member of Remember the Milk, and you'd have to know who they were. So I'm just going to pick Joe. And I, I, if I hit enter, it just found this Joe Pearson guy that I could share with. But you'd really want to be working with somebody in your district or somebody who you knew their name, you knew they were a member, etc. Once this person is in your list, you could share with them. Now, a couple of caveats. With the free account, you can only share lists with two people. So it's pretty limited. The other caveat is that while they have to be in your list, you have to also be in their list. So this is something that you need to coordinate. Now, Joe Pearson is in my list, but I'm not in his list. He doesn't know who I am. And therefore, this isn't going to work until that, that situation would be worked out. Those are the basics of Remember the Milk. It's a useful application for organizing yourself. And uh, it's worth taking a look at.